Hi folks, today's video is a video talking about a few things you should know about, about the Volvo EX30 that nobody seems to be talking about. I've no idea why uh, the mainstream media seems to be glossing over uh, the issue, I suppose, and no pun intended. So that gives you a clue as to what I'll be talking about. Uh, so yeah, my name is Ben Alexander. I do EV news videos every day. Uh, every now and then I do a video where I do quality control checks and I go really, really close in 4K and I look at the car really up close in all the weird little spaces uh, just to give us a sense of the quality and the level of polish uh, that a manufacturer has put into their product. Um, genuinely disappointed when I saw the X30 this time. This is the, uh, I've seen a few Volvo EX30s. Um, I've been in them, they drive really, really nice. Beautiful cars, genuinely really, really would like one. Um, I'm waiting for a little bit of uh, feedback from some current owners though, before I, you know, I, I actually go and get one. Just so we're on the same page, some of the things you just saw there, such as the screen on the inside, seems really, really perfect, makes really nice noises, super fast to use, that's good. The inside door handles, really, really nice, some of the best handles on the inside of a car I've seen, they look really nice too. Uh, the outside handles, uh, genuinely the best handles on any car I've ever touched, I think they're really, really nice. So we've gone through the surface level stuff, it's a, it's a very pretty car, drives nice, amazing specs, reasonable price. Uh, everybody likes them. 75% of the electric vehicle sales on Volvo's books right now are for this car. Uh, I really, I, I genuinely think it's really nice, but uh, this particular car I saw this time was the first time I'd seen under the bonnet of an EX30. I've seen a few of them now, uh, and uh, I didn't really like what I saw at all. Last week I went to visit my brother. He's also got a new Volvo. It's about a year old, and I actually was stood around the car talking to him, and I noticed a bit of rust on the back left quarter panel, uh, middle of the windows height, so nowhere near the the road or anything like that, and shouldn't have any stone chips on it. And you could see that it, there was no stone chips. It was just literally there was some uh, you know a bit of corrosion underneath, bubbling through, and. Uh, that was a bit of a shock, I didn't really expect that. You do have a three year warranty when you buy a new Volvo though for uh, dodgy paint. So here you can see under the wheel arch on the screen, uh, they haven't clear coated that and they haven't really painted it in yellow. They've just, that's overspray. That is exactly what overspray looks like. And I, I know what they've done. It's the same as a lot of companies these days. They when the car is basically unfinished and it's in the factory with nothing on it, they paint the main panels and any overspray that hits on the gaps is left and they don't really care so much about it. Some companies, uh, of course, they uh, they will paint the paint, you know, the actual base coat, and then they will put clear coat over it. And then when they're doing the clear, clear coat, they're a bit stingy with it and they save a bit of money. Also a little bit of weight, but we're talking, you know, a, a, quarter, you know, a quarter of a kilo in clear coat for the back of a bonnet, for example. So a quarter of a kilo, it's a bit of something. So I was surprised to see no clear coat underneath all of the of the bonnet here, you can see there's basically none over everything. That's literally the little bit of shine there is on the, the base coat. There's no uh, you know, sealer or clear coat there, and you know, paint itself, base coat is not enough. Uh, so I was surprised with that, especially from underneath the wheel arch as well, and what I, I've now learned about my brother's car. It doesn't look great, I have to admit. For a car that I am very fond of, I'm a bit stunned at what I'm seeing. It's not great. Uh, of course the outside stuff is nice, the handles are nice, the screen inside, that stuff matters. Someone also said, uh, literally a few days ago in the comments, and I'll put it on the screen for you, anyone who thinks a press car indicates uh, customer quality is seriously fooling themselves. That said, if it's crap at the show car, as a show car, or at the show car they put, then you have very little chance for a good customer car. This car proves you wrong. They do not put, and from experience, I've done a lot of these quality control check videos now, they do not put a better version of the car out at these exhibitions and, and whatnot. They don't do that. You might remember the uh, Tesla Model 3 Highland video, the quality check video that I did on that. Uh, I'll put a clip on screen for you now. That was fantastic when you lifted both the front and the back. Uh, the Cyberster was also the same, and in, in the end I did end up seeing at, uh, underneath the bonnet on the Cyberster. So uh, other manufacturers are doing this, uh, not all of them, BYD don't do it on a couple of their cars, for example, like the Seal and the Mato 3 and the Dolphin, they don't paint the backs of the bonnets. R really weird, I don't know why they don't do this. They've got the car in the factory, they've got the, ba the, the bare metal, 
they've painted it in the stuff, they put the colour on it, and then they only put the sealer at the end uh, over most of it, but not everywhere. It's hard enough to keep a car, uh, you know, protected when you put when you do put it on, let alone when you don't. So here is also an EX30 at Gothenburg Airport. I did this. This is some of the footage from the quality control check video. Looks really nice in this colour, on in this surrounding, uh, in this like area, you know. So what I thought was, I'm quite surprised that they chose to exhibit a brand new EX30. A very you know interesting car. Lots of people really keen to sit in it. There was a queue. And they chose yellow. Yellow represents less than 1% of vehicle sales uh, in the UK last year. Not a very interesting colour. Also, psychologically, when you literally just Google this, yellow um, is a colour that represents affordability, uh, cheapness, um, cost effectiveness. And I, I honestly thought it just looked a bit cheap and a bit not very good. I don't think that was very well thought out. So maybe that's having an impact on the way that I even think about, you know, what I saw underneath the bonnet. It just makes all the edges look a bit sharp, a bit rubbish, a bit plastic, you know, a little bit rubbish. If they would have used black or white or something like that, it probably would have made it a lot more desirable. If you agree, uh, put it in the comments. You agree or disagree. That is an interesting thing. I haven't done a poll on this, but... Uh, Maybe I will, if I can think about how to word a poll and keep it succinct. Also, I don't think it helped that they put yellow uh, on the car. As you could also see on the Cyberster, it just doesn't look great um, on the edges and when you look around the edges of the panels and the screws and when it hits on the little bits of sealer and that sort of thing. Uh, it just doesn't look very good, partly because yellow doesn't cover very well. So black paint covers quite well greys and uh, you know white isn't so bad but yellow for some reason if you speak to someone who paints cars uh, for example they will tell you that yellow paint doesn't cover things as easily as other colors and so when you don't when you're a little bit stingy and you're spraying the back of panels it can make the edges look a bit not very good and the edges of screws look a bit thinly covered uh, that is not rubbish, that is true. <laughs> I encourage you to ask some painters if you don't believe that. Uh, but it does make the screws look a bit naff and a bit cheap. Uh, so that's kind of why I was saying things under the bonnet genuinely looked a bit rough. And I don't think they meet the level of polish that I would hope for from a modern car at this price. If they just sprayed things in a better colour, I think I might have thought a little bit less negatively about what I was seeing in the, uh, in the exhibition. But... Uh, yeah, beautiful car, not so sure about some of the stuff I'm seeing uh, with the paint underneath the wheel arches, for example, uh, and under the bonnet, all that looks a bit eh, a bit less less than good, I suppose. Um, the car, though, the rest of it, really nice. Like I've said, I still think it's an awesome car, and mm, it's in my top two of cars you can buy now, but I just felt like someone should say it. it, it that is a thing, that they need to not be stingy with paint if you're going to hand over... Uh, tens of thousands of pounds or dollars wherever you are the least they could do is finish painting stuff you know there's no reason for that there's clearly a little bit of footage where uh, you can see they've sprayed the whole bonnet back and front in yellow and then they've painted the top in clear coat some of it has misted around as they've done the edge and then you can see the clear coat fade away. They haven't separated that and painted matte clear coat on the back, which someone did suggest. They haven't done that. This is a serious thing. This is the sort of thing that's going to cause a lot of rust if you're in a cold climate. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, water gets in there or moisture or, uh, you know, there's a lot of salt on the roads, that sort of stuff. So if you're in England, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I also saw no evidence of wax oil having been sprayed on the backs of any of the panels. You can see this with uh, GWM cars and BW, BYD cars, uh, for example. I couldn't see any on the Volvo at the exhibition, not anything behind the panels or anywhere at all. I could see grease in a couple of places where I, you need to see grease, like in the locks and that sort of thing, on the, on the you know, where you sh shut the door and it latches onto the car. But no wax oil. I, I really do hope they have wax oiled the panels because I saw nothing and I was looking for it. And uh, I hope they're not going to sell millions of cars or hundreds of thousands of cars and not wax oil and not paint things properly and sell it to you. Uh, because I think that would be very, very sad indeed. So really nice car. 
I still think people should get one and consider it. I do think in this day and age people should have an understanding of how to repair basic electronics themselves, you know, I do a lot of that. And uh, I also think that people uh, should just get used to buying things and just modifying them slightly, just you know, improving things. I've seen some people recently on the internet buying a brand new car and they went to get their brand new car wax oiled in this exact way, where they get, uh, you know, some oil and they shove it through some sort of pressurized straw and you shove that straw in all the gaps and cracks in the car and you spray it and the oil is a bit waxy and it sort of just goes hard on the back of all the panels in the cracks and basically seals the back of everything. I think that should be the norm. If you're going to spend 50 grand on a car in whatever currency you're in, a couple hundred dollars, go and get yourself some protection I think. Just get them to completely cake the car in that stuff because it really does protect cars and uh, it is pretty brilliant. And you definitely want to see that in the gaps and cracks like you do in D GWM cars. Uh, so yeah, lo longevity is something that I, I really care about. And uh, people buying products and, and manufacturers selling these people products that are going to last more than three years before rotting out. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, I have to mention this because it's, it means a lot to me that people aren't being uh, screwed and not being sold cars with paint. <laughs> so thanks for watching and uh, thanks for watching this little black bit at the end here and uh, yeah remember to subscribe if you're interested in, in this sort of content and uh, yeah a really good honest take at what we've got on the market available these days and and, and about that if you want to keep up to date with the latest news about the uh, EVs that you can buy and everything so yeah thanks for watching enjoy the rest of the day.